Good morning, Harbor Wildcats, and welcome to another great show of HBWN. I'm Haley Hendricks. And I'm Drew Jenkins. On today's show, Governor Beebe made a surprise visit to Springdale to deliver a prestigious award. We check in with the final installment of LPGA and highlight some of the Harbor's Got Talent. Plus, WCSN gets us caught up on the game against the Southside Rebels. Today is November 11th, or November 1st, 2011, and your HBWN starts now. Our top story. When the governor makes a surprise visit, you know it's a big deal. He was here to present the prestigious Milken Award. The Family Milken Foundation has presented the Fam Milken Award nationwide with $25,000 for the past 25 years to elite teachers. And now Springdale Schools has another award winner. Caroline Gomez explains. Actually, today I'm here at Joe Kelly Middle School on a very special event. Not only are we celebrating this as a Springfield district, but also Arkansas as a state. The Milken Educator Award this year goes to Andrea McKinnon. I'm in shock. It, it's, it's a shocking experience, you know, especially when everything is um, totally under uh, top secret. It, you, it's a shocking experience, yes, and it's, it's humbling as well. Although her parents didn't get their secondary education, they migrated from Mexico for a better life, and now their daughter, Andrea McKenna, is winning one of the most prestigious awards in the nation. It feels great. Um, my teachers are all winners, I know that, and every day they come in here and they do work miracles with kids, but uh, to see one of our teachers recognized like this in the way all of our teachers should be recognized, I think it's just an incredible day. Governor Mike Beebe and Education Commissioner Dr. Tom Kimber presented the Milken Awards to Andrea McKenna, becoming the second teacher in Springfield School's history to win this award. My parents didn't have an education. My dad is from Mexico. My mom was a migrant worker. They, they lived picking beans and strawberries and cucumbers and potatoes for many years. And um, they worked hard so that with my sisters and I could get an education. And I want you to know that dreams come true. If you work hard at it, you put your mind to it, and you can Great teachers just want to come and work with kids who need them and uh, we're just very fortunate to attract the brightest and the best teachers and today we recognize one of our finest. Springdale does a lot of firsts. Uh, they do a lot of things that uh, other school districts seem to follow or emulate later on and uh, so the fact that uh, the award winner came from here is not a huge surprise. I think they're going to be very proud and you know what, that's what I love because I, I think my parents are going to be very proud and that's the part that touches my heart the most because they've worked really hard for us and I, I think they're going to be very proud. We're very fortunate and lucky to have teachers like Andrea McKenna in our school district. For HBWN, I'm Carolina Gomez. More than 2,500 teachers had the honor during the awards history. Congratulations to Andrea McKinney for the for all your hard work. The LPGA had a lot of talent this year. Lots of competition and a lot of fans. Hunter Puglisa and Lindsay Coulter brings us the final installment of their series. The LPGA Northwest Arkansas Championship presented by P&G began by giving children from Elmdale Elementary in Springdale a chance to swing a golf club for the first time and meet lady professionals the day before the tournament began. Friday, September 9th, was the first round of play. Michelle Wee, who came in second place in the P&G Beauty Classic in 2010, was very excited to play this course again with more consistency. But after shooting nine over par, she wouldn't make it to the second round. At the end of the day, Stacy Lewis and Yanni Sang were tied at first, with Jin Yeon Pop close behind. Oh, I love to come back here. The people are really nice. And good. Great, great city, you know, it's always get a very big crowd and especially this this year the weather was so nice, so beautiful. The excitement built as Yanni Sang fought to keep her title as the Northwest Arkansas champion against Amy Yang. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a playoff. With the tournament going into a sudden death playoff, the fans got to experience the excitement of Yanni Sang winning the Northwest Arkansas championship back to back. For HBWN, I'm Thank you, Hunter and Lindsay. If you would like to see all three stories uncut, visit our Facebook page, Harbor Video Productions, and check it out. 
Harbor Wildcat students and teachers donate money to eat tacos so that Band Midwest can get that one chance in a lifetime opportunity to go to Chicago, being one of the five bands internationally to be invited. Talent, talent you ask for, well talent we have. Harbor hosted yet another exciting Harbor's Got Talent and Alexis Arenas had cameras everywhere. Duets. Comedy. Part of the third annual Harbor Scott Talent. Jacob Schumacher performed at the preview and the talent show. Were you nervous as you were before, or did you get were you were you hyped up? Once I got out there, I was pretty good. Um, the nerves kind of went away as soon as I started playing. Just the dance officers performed a dance that they practiced at a camp they attended this summer. The judges this year were Brett Mitchell, Vance Pittman, and Carlos Berg. Emma Ridings and Kenley Collins were one of many duets that performed at the talent show. You got done with your performance. How do you think you guys did? Good, I think we did good, yeah. Do you think the uh, practice paid off? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. After long hours of practice, the winner of Harvard's Got Talent is... Well, Connor Doyle and Grant Gershner to build up. Harbor really does have talent for HBWN. Thank you, Alexis. Looks like you are right about talent. I want to say good job to all of our Wildcats who participated in the talent show. You did fantastic. And congratulations to the grand winner, Grant Gershner. And if you want to see all of the acts, we are posting them on our, Harbor, on our Facebook page, Harbor Wildcat Video Productions. Though this be madness, yet there is method in it. Har Hamlet 2-2. Two, two. Theater and English work together to create a Hamlet in 15 minutes. Abby Peterson brings you the details. Thanks, Haley. Students in theater class tried out to be a part of theater's play, Hamlet, in 15 minutes. I mean, everybody knows the deal. The play will be a condensed and shortened version of Shakespeare's famous play, Hamlet. Junior Bethany Bain is hoping to get the role of Ophelia. Um, I'm really excited for the play because it's like an older play and so the costumes will be really interesting and different. Students of third period theater class had to pick a monologue of their choice for their tryout. Once the parts are selected, the play will be shown to all English classes. Drama teacher Samantha Brown is excited to be putting on the play. It is the original storyline of the William Shakespeare play Hamlet all bundled up into 15 minutes. The play will be performed on November 29th and 30th in the theater room. Make sure to be in your English class on this day to check out the play Hamlet in 15 minutes. For HBWN, I'm Abby Peterson. Back to you, Haley. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus, bad begins and worse remains behind. Our East Lab presented presentations about Hispanic Heritage Month. Matt Mates was there and files this report. Month. Students in the EAST program have been doing projects to commemorate the different countries. Heritage Month is a time of celebration and cultural reflection for students at Harbor High. The students are here because it's Hispanic Heritage Month and they're talking uh, or they're hearing speeches from people who have a lot of power in this area or people who have had a lot of success that are Hispanic. This project is, is put together by EAST. Um, I know there were four Hispanic students that have been working on it quite diligently and then the rest of the group I know has been, I think it will help them learn. Right now I'm doing a unit over biculturalism and so this fits in perfectly with it because it talks about how they maintain their home culture along with the new American culture and how they speak possibly both languages. Um, also how someone can come from, again like I said earlier, from humble backgrounds to a new beginning in the United States. For this activity, students went to the seminar room where they heard from speakers that motivated them to get a higher education and appreciate their cultural heritage. Um, we have been filling out a paper that uh, basically is for us to set goals on whether or not or how we're going to get to certain things like college or uh, family or uh, work and things like that. The cultural heritage activity at Harbor's goal is to teach students about their heritage and to tell them that nothing is stopping them from being successful. 
For HPWN, I'm Matthew Mates. Thank you, Matthew. East Lab will next present in an hour with a hero on November 11th. All right, coming up after the break, we will check in with Christina Aber on what's trending. Hey, man. Want to smoke? Yeah. <laughs> it's like smoking comes before me. So what's wrong? It's starting to get hard for me to breathe again. It feels like someone's standing on my chest. I'm not going to stand around and watch you smoke your life. Hey, um, it looks like we're going to have to remove your left lung. I'm sorry. You brought this upon yourself. He was a good friend, loved by all, and will be missed after losing his battle to lung cancer. I'm going to see my counselor. I'm going to... I'm going to see my counselor. I'm going to see my counselor. Going to see your counselor means you will meet all of your graduation requirements, as well as helping you plan for specific career objectives, technical training, and finding the right college for you. Prepare for college and career success by seeing your counselor today. Welcome. Let's talk about your future. Welcome back to What's Trending. I'm Christina Hebert. This past week, we went to the theater to find what's trending. Let's get started. We went to Fayetteville at Malco Razorback Theater to see what movies are out and what students here at Harbor are excited to go see or are waiting to go see. I want to go see Footloose because the previews look really good and so does the dancing and I think it'll be a really good movie. I'm really looking forward to go seeing Puss in Boots. You know, Puss in Boots sounds pretty tight, but uh, Paranormal Activity Paranormal is activities for a second. second. Yep. Paranormal Activity? Oh, Gucci. Gucci. Yes. Yeah. I saw Paranormal Activity 3 this Sunday. And what did you think about it? Um, it was good. It was pretty scary. Students had different takes and told us how many times they actually do go to the theater. Once every few weeks. Probably a couple times a month. That's all I have for you today, Harbor. Make sure you find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check out Harbor Herald to vote on the poll. For What's Trending, I'm Christine Aber. <laughs> Good morning, Wildcats. Welcome to another segment of WCSN. I'm Carter Henson. Last week, the Wildcats stood on the Southside Rebels. Matt Bowen brings you the highlights. Wildcats took on the Southside Rebels in a 7A West showdown last Friday night. Let's get to the highlights. Southside's first possession, Evan Nessner breaks through for the sack. Later, Harbor with ball, Austin Mayfield drops back and look at the sick catch by Evan Johnson. Unfortunately, this drive would stall. Harbor's next possession, Mayfield hands off to Tucker Lee, rumbling, stumbling for the first down. Later in the first, Southside with the ball, the quarterback rolls out of the pocket, and Jordan Coombs gets the sack. Now, hard work ball down 7 0. John Vaughn fakes the handoff and takes it up the middle for the first down. That'll become a trend tonight. Now, the second quarter, John Vaughn once again takes the draw play right down the pipe. The Wildcats are driving. A few plays later, Evan Johnson takes the jet sweep and plows in the end zone from one yard out. Harvard ties the game at seven. Fast forward to the third quarter, Evan Johnson in punt formation sees some open space and takes the fake punt to get the first down. 
Later in third, Harbor down 21-7. John Vaughn drops back, sees no one open, rolls out, breaks the tackle, and takes the ball into the red zone for a 19-yard gain. Later in the drive, fourth and goal, Vaughn drops back and finds Evan Johnson in the end zone for the four-yard touchdown. Harbor trails 21-14. Fast forward to the fourth, Austin Mayfield back in, finds Evan Johnson, get off me for the 35-yard game. Two plays later, John Vaughn finds Michael Fine for the three-yard touchdown. Unfortunately, Harbor will lose this game 28-21 to the Southside Rebels. For WCSN, I'm Matt Bowen. Thanks, Matt. Tough loss for the Wildcats. Also last week, the Volleyball Wildcats headed to the state tournament in Conway. The Wildcats were surprised to see that a pep rally had been set up to send them off. Cannon Gibbs brings you the story. Last Tuesday morning in Wildcat Arena, the school had a pep rally for our Lady Wildcat Volleyball team as they headed to the state tournament in Conway. Pep talks were delivered by Dr. Brackett and Coach Marshall to give the team some words of encouragement. A couple of players from the team shared their thoughts. And we were kind of hoping we could have another one of these when we bring back a trophy. Dr. Brackett gives the team a package as students cheer the team on. The pep rally was closed with the singing of the alma mater. Thanks, Cannon. A few weeks ago, the Wildcat Cross Country team ran in the Chili Pepper Festival. The top girls runners are as follows, Valerie Reyna, Abby Foreman, and Caitlin Collier. And the top boys runners were Dino Andrade, Dallin Fawcett, and Austin Fox. Great job to the Wildcat Cross Country team. That does it here at WCSN. Next week we have Fayetteville football game highlights. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Cotter. Look forward to taking on the favorable dogs. Okay, here's what we are working on. This week, our Harbor Wildcat News will be participating in the DUTV VidCon 72-hour broadcast challenge. We will have three days to create an outstanding show. We will be airing this show next week, and the following week we'll be back to regular programming. Oh, and I hope you guys got a lot of Halloween candy since last yesterday was Halloween and all. <laughs> okay, for everybody here at Harbor Studios, I'm Haley Hendricks. And I'm Drew Jenkins. Have a great day and see you next week. <laughs>